This is the story of a man and a turtle. I, uh, well, it's, it's a lot cooler than I'm making it sound. The Red Turtle was directed by Mikhail Dudok de Witt and produced by Studio Wild Bunch, stationed in France, but co-produced and distributed by Studio Ghibli. It was released in 2016 and was in production during the years leading up to Miyazaki's retirement, and he personally wanted to team the studio up with Wild Bunch, specifically the director, for this project. The film is a visual experience completely separate from any other animated French film and from any other Ghibli film. It exists on its own as a surreal yet calm movie that slowly tells you its story without any dialogue whatsoever. I mean it, not one word is spoken outside of the occasional grunt and scream. It's a largely interpretive, symbolic fantasy art piece that, depending on who you are, may or may not appeal to you. It's something that I've watched several times in order to fully understand the symbols and themes, which is not to say you have to revisit this film to understand it. It's a digestible story that you can easily interpret as it unfolds. But I kept revisiting the film because I liked it so much and wanted to understand it better. Also to make a YouTube video. The Red Turtle is a story that is hard not to spoil, so I'll drop a time code when I start to analyze the plot and themes, but as with any underrated animation, I highly recommend it. Normally I'd provide a link, but I'm trying to avoid dropping shady links in my descriptions in the future, you know? You know, it's just, it's not a good look. Anyway, let's dive in. <laughs> <coughs> Our story begins with a man shipwrecked at sea and within an inch of his life amidst the crashing waves. He ends up ashore a deserted island in the middle of nowhere. As he explores this island, he learns just how cruel, punishing, and indifferent nature can be. He finds himself in harsh storms, claustrophobic water pockets, his skin crawling with bugs every night, and as you would imagine, he has very little patience for his circumstances. As the days go on, he attempts to build build a boat out of the plentiful bamboo trees. But just as it looks like his freedom is in sight, a giant red turtle destroys his raft not once, not twice, but three separate times. This of course greatly enrages the man as his goal of freedom is constantly thwarted. But what's interesting is, even though the turtle keeps destroying his boat, it's not hostile towards him in any other way. And so begins the ever complicated relationship with this aquatic creature. This is pretty much as far as I can go into the story without spoilers, so let's move on to the visuals. You may be thinking there's not much to talk about given how minimalist the backgrounds and animation is. Which, yeah, I mean the highest level of detail in the film are the leaves on the trees. But the Red Turtle's character animation is patient, thoughtful, and delicate. Every frame is dedicated to capturing even the smallest weight shift or wind breeze. This adds so much humanity humanity as well as physical weight to the characters. But unlike Triplets or Illusionist, the acting is a lot less mime-like and more subdued and gentle. Despite the dotted eye designs, they feel incredibly realistic, and so much emotion is communicated. The film utilizes sepia tones, muted greens, and gray scales in its color palette, aiming to create a tranquil and peaceful environment, which is aided by its incredibly ominous score. The simplicity and spacious of the visuals helps you identify with the stranded man, as he feels so insignificant in comparison to the overwhelming nature. And this keeps you hooked on the narrative because you want to see him overcome and succeed against the towering odds. Plus, it helps that you really don't know where the story is gonna go. Like, if there's anything you can say about the movie, it's not predictable. And speaking of not predictable, time to analyze just what exactly this whole story is and means. Here's your time code if you don't want to get spoiled, and if you don't care about spoilers and are just along for the ride, then strap in, cause it's a wild one. So after the Red Turtle destroys his raft for the third time, the castaway goes atop the ridge to scream out his rage to the heavens. And yeah, I'd feel the same. Probably worse, honestly. But then, 
a bewildering sight takes place. The red turtle actually comes ashore, and wasting no time whatsoever, he greets it with hostility and even turns it over on its shell. Which is... I mean, I get it, he's pissed and the turtle kinda deserves it, but that, that still feels low. Anyway, after the man's tantrum, he once again goes back to square one trying to build another raft. But as the days go by, the man is slowly encroached with guilt about killing this animal. His futile efforts to resuscitate the turtle push him even further into dread and panic. But then, another baffling phenomenon occurs. The turtle transforms into a human woman. Yeah, I know, it's it's a bit, it's weird, but just go with it. So the man builds a roof for her out of branches to keep her safe from the sun. A day passes until she finally awakens, and a few more days pass until they're actually able to interact with each other. Once the man abandons his raft at sea, the same way the woman abandoned her shell at sea. Once this confirmation of motives is made aware to one another, they finally start to share time together. And to the man's surprise, she treats him with kindness and hospitality as well as forgiveness for what he did, leading to a beautifully executed scene where the man laments his actions towards her former vessel. They share a beautiful metaphor for falling in love together, as we cut to approximately five years later, where we find out he fucked the turtle! So it would appear that our protagonist and former antagonist have started a family together. How sweet. They partake in all the adorable family shenanigans you see on postcards and placeholder picture frames. During this time, the little baby boy falls into the same chasm his father was plunged into at the beginning of the film. But being a crossbreed of a human and, uh fucking turtle. He survives the intense pressures of underwater and swims back to his parents safely. Yeah, I glanced over it at the beginning, but that scene where he falls into the water pocket was unexpectedly intense. Holy shit. As the years go on, we see the relationship between his father and mother grow into a beautifully healthy and prosperous family. They swim with the turtles freely, they gather food together, sleep next to each other. Yep, it all seems hunk. Dory. Oh no, something terrible is gonna happen, isn't it? Yes, yes it does. A terrible tsunami strikes the island, taking down most of the bamboo trees and wildlife in its path. Despite the dire circumstances, this sequence is a beautifully animated piece of destruction with top-notch special effects animation that I personally find quite addicting to watch. After the storm, the son recovers his injured mother, but his father is nowhere to be found. Found. So he recruits the help of the turtles to find his dad, who he doesn't find until the next day, hanging by a thread of his life yet again. They return to the destroyed island as they embrace each other and start to rebuild. And for this next portion of the movie, we focus more on the sun and how his perception of the world changes as he ages. We get these meditative and contemplative scenes where the sun looks beyond the horizon of the sea and longs for a life outside the island which reaches its climax where the son just gives his parents a look of assuredness and responsibility as he's ready to embark on this next life journey. The mother, while hesitant, reluctantly accepts this gesture, as they both know it would be best to let their son be free and not constrained to a life of isolation on this island. And this Chad doesn't even need a raft, he just swims with the turtles, fuck yeah. You're gonna get easily exhausted swimming like that though, like holy shit, I know you're part turtle but goddamn boy, that is... That's nuts. This leads to the final portion of the film, where the man and woman spend their final years alone together enjoying whatever simple pleasures come their way. Until, finally, one night, the man peacefully passes away while looking toward the ocean. His wife reacts in shock at first, but quickly accepts that her loved one is passed on. She lays next to his body, and soon enough, she transforms back into the red turtle and returns quietly to the sea. But what does it all mean? 
So this is one of those films where anyone who watches it will come away thinking something different. Some read the story as allegorical, and some take it in as a straightforward narrative of a man who fucks a turtle and dies. But there are a few common through lines in people's theories and interpretations of this story. The most prominent one being about the theme of our relationship with nature. The man is at the mercy of this island, and he aggressively tries to assert his control over it only to fail to his dismay. It isn't until he accepts that he can't control the whims of nature is when he finally finds peace on this island. Once he embraces the nature around him, he finds hidden meaning in what he used to find maddening, which is a very zen philosophy. Oftentimes we are consumed by what is out of our control, and it isn't until we surrender to the chaos of the universe that we can finally start to find peace of mind. Or, as Alan Watts would put it, This seems a sort of paradox to say this, but the principle of unity, of coming to a sense of, of oneness with the whole of the rest of the universe, is not to try to obtain power over the rest of the universe. That will only disturb it and uh, antagonize it and make it seem less one with you than ever. The way to become one with the universe is to trust it as another, as you would another, and say, let's see what you're going to do. Which leads to the other through line that this is a story about the uncertainty of life. Our protagonist gets thrust into frustrating and seemingly hopeless situations throughout the first act especially, only to discover meaning in his new life with the, uh, red turtle woman. This is a weird movie the more I think about it. The man desperately wanted to return to his former life, but the red turtle, who we can assume was trying to save him from death at sea, offered him a new life on the island. Which, of course, came with its own pros and cons, but overall, the man was fulfilled with his home he created with his family. And in the end, that was enough. But then there's the son, who has his own little arc of maturity. And many feel this clashes with the main themes because his arc is all about taking control of your own life and being independent. Even from a young age, the boy was more than capable of survival on this island. So how would that support the theme of surrendering control? and letting life take you on its journey. And I totally see where those people are coming from with that argument. However, I find myself disagreeing with that sentiment because the film never makes it apparent that you shouldn't make concrete decisions that put you on a different trajectory of life. For example... After the turtle transforms into the woman, she doesn't stop the man from completing his raft. He could still very well make it and sail away. But he chose to abandon it and start a new life with the woman. He chose to have a baby with her and ultimately chose to remain the rest of his life on the island. And when faced with these big decisions, both the man and the son made choices that they found would be best for them and their survival. If you have a counter-argument, feel free to come comment and we'll have a good old family-friendly internet discussion. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly what the director had in mind when he was making this film. In fact, Dudok DeWitt stated that he hopes people can let go while watching this movie, and let the story carry you as though you were listening to a symphony. That's not to say you shouldn't try to find meaning in its themes, but the movie isn't reliant on those themes to a point where it consumes the story, because they all connect to the movie message of life being unpredictably chaotic, and there's something beautiful about that. Your life may not pan out exactly how you expected. Maybe you get thrown curveballs and inconveniences or even worse, tragedies that completely dismantle your preconceived notions of what your life should be or should have been. But that doesn't mean it's the end. There's always a chance to rebuild, rediscover, and reinvent yourself and your life the way you see fit. There's always a blessing in disguise, and there's always hope for the future, no matter how dark it seems. 
The Red Turtle is an incredibly executed story with soft animation, beautiful imagery, patient pacing, and thought-provoking themes that can very well aid you in times of uncertainty and doubt. It's the type of animated film we need more of, ones that have enough faith in their audience to rely solely on universal body language and emotions that anyone can easily identify with without the use of dialogue. It's an underappreciated art form. Once again, I highly recommend this film to anyone looking for pure escapism. You will more than likely not be disappointed. I've seen it around four times now, and each time it has gotten better and better. And you know, even after all this time, I'm still not that great at closing off my videos. Hey, you should like and subscribe if you already haven't. I don't want to be one of those YouTubers that fucking badges their audience like that, but everyone keeps telling me I need to keep saying this at the end of each video because it apparently gets me more views and more subscribers. So, uh, yeah, how you doing?